who been here. Even there were two or three. I would be very happy to stay for as long as you like. And God will be in <laughs> Because we, we, I'm not conditioned by time. When we get into these things, how can you say, well, you can do it in 15 minutes? I don't try to limit the spirit. Well, you can't do that. The spirituality opens up eternity. I know. Yes. And if you get to eternity, then you get renewed. More and more and more. And then you become very powerful and strong. Well, that's what I do. Yeah. I, mean, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not the example of this, but I try to, to imitate the saints and the great theologians. I try to get close. Now we're coming back to our text, which we did last time, and uh, we said, remember that I gave you, you have a paper which breaks down. Uh, if anybody doesn't have one, I can give you one. It's on the screen. Yes, this is, this is the one. Um, this is a breakdown of what this great letter, which was written three years after the ending of the Ephesus affair, and the council had not achieved its purpose, uh, and they went back, the Antiochians, to Antioch, with John their patriarch, and the Alexandrians to Alexandria with sincerity. And then the emperor said they were imprisoned uh, because they, they divided the church. Uh, they had two different councils. So both of them appealed to the emperor that they were the right people and the others were the wrong people. <laughs> uh, we read it a little bit here, but there is another, some other texts, the next one, uh, probably we won't have time, but I, I, can, uh, I will mention them to you. And we may, may come back and continue on another occasion to look at these letters that the Alexandrians objected, some of the Alexandrians objected to uh, sincere. How did he agree with the Antiochians? I mean, they didn't, they, all, they thought that they were all Nestorians. They were not all Nestorians. But they had a different way of approaching the mystery of Christ. Because everybody has his own perception and his own if you like, formula. Where do you put the emphasis? What is the common element and what is uncommon? And is it really uncommon? Or is it because that's the way you put it and you understand it? Uh, because we are relative human beings. And our thinking is relative. Everything is relative and related to the truth. And that's why to have the same mind and the same dogma, it's only a gift of God, a gift of grace. And that's what sincerely says. And that's why he unites two different expressions of Orthodox Antiochians who put it in their way, and he accepts it. And then he says, but that is what we say in this way. So they are both Orthodox. And that's why he is the one who corrects the Antiochians, and he corrects them in their misunderstanding because they were saying that they are heretics. And of course, the Alexandrians, they were saying they are heretics. And this kind of thing still exists in history because we don't have the first Ephesus. The first Ephesus ends with this letter that St. Cyril wrote back to St. John. They were both saints. Uh, because St. John condemned, the first thing is he condemned Nestorius and Nestorianism, both sides. So the Antiochians were not Nestorians and the Alexandrians were not Eutychians were not monophysites, they were miaphysites. But what is miaphysite and monophysite? Uh, that's the difference between heresy and orthodoxy. And it is explained by sincerity. Therefore, uh, to talk about two natures, divine and human, united in Christ, and uh, what is the union, the manner of union, that is the Antiochian, two natures. He's truly God, truly man, two natures, the divine nature, and the human nature. And what is the um, Alexandrian view? They also say that he's true God and true man, and that he's son of God and son of man, but the same one. These are, these are the key words of sincerity. One and the same, Christ is one. Nestorius was saying that uh, the son of God is not the Christ born of the, of the 
of Mary. He's not God. The Son of God is not the Son of Mary. A divided Christ. In other words, we don't have God coming to save us. He came to save us. God created us and he came to claim us from our sin. Not only us, and through us, the whole creation. That's why in the end, God will be all in all. What is the end? It depends on us. If we repent, human beings. If we don't repent, then there's the last judgment of this period, this age, the present age, which is evil. And Christ will come to judge the living and the dead. And those who go into the kingdom, this age is finished. And they are in the kingdom, in heaven with the saints. Those who are not repented and they have not sought the kingdom of God will go into another age. Will they repent? If they don't, they will go into another age. Because all they are all created by God and he doesn't want to punish us, to destroy us. There's no evil in God. God doesn't want to destroy anyone, even the devil. He wants the devil to be saved because he was an angel in his, in his existence. But there is a problem with the devil and there is a problem with the fallen human beings that goodness is stronger than evil. Well, this is what he said here when he expressed. We did, we did uh, on the basis of the, uh, we have here the plan. There is an introduction, what happened and how it happened. The emperor demanded for both to sort it out and unite the churches, Antiochians and Alexandrians. And also, of course, that involved those in Constantinople, in other words, uh, and, and Jerusalem, the ancient patriarchates as we call them, the Palefata Patriarchia, the old primary patriarchates that were created in the first centuries. So, uh, the happiness of peace, that's the key word, that they must make peace. And the second one is the visit of Paul of Mesa. Uh, we have it on this little uh, page, page here. And this is the beginning which says, uh, to my Lord, beloved brother and fellow minister, John, Patriarch of Antioch, Cyril, greetings in the Lord. Listen to my Lord. He makes him his Lord. So did John, he wrote to him. We haven't got his, the, the other letter here, but uh, we're doing Cyril. Beloved brother, look at that, and fellow minister. John, Cyril, greetings to the Lord. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Heaven which is heaven, the heavenly kingdom where Christ is ascended into heaven and he's coming again. That's the mother of God, the saints. The little book on uh, sincerity we, which we have, uh, I have translated into English. It says actually how he was taken to heaven and so uh, the mother of God, sincerely while he was on earth, he was taken up to heaven by an angel. And so Christian, talking to the mother of God and saying, this city is against me. He doesn't want to put my name to be commemorated. And he heard it. And, and he heard also the mother of God saying to, to Chrysostom that forgive him. He suffered much more than anybody else for me because he recognized who I am. I'm not just a mother. I'm the mother of God. But by the grace of God, since the new Eve, the new humanity. He's the mother of us all. That's why we have St. Mary everywhere. We say, uh, if, if something happens to you, if you have a problem, I mean, that's what the Greeks do. They say, Panagion, my holy, my holy, Vespina. We call her through the intercessions of the mother of God. I say this every day. And all the saints help me on this, on whatever, every morning. Help my family, help my friends, help my students, help my... I pray this every day, three times a day before I eat anything, and I thank for the food that I am going to do. And I venerate all the saints and the Panagia, the Lord, uh, blessing the Holy Trinity first, and then the Lord blessing my food, okay? Um, so... Uh, then it says here that the dissension 
has been removed. Let the heavens rejoice. This is a cosmic uh, uh, context that this letter is written, opens up heaven and earth. In other words, the, 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 the first world that was created of the angels, where Christ is, the heavens, uh, and the earth is the visible universe. He puts in this context a letter. He opens up heaven and earth. Let the, the, let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad for the middle wall of the hedge. What is the hedge? Make a hedge to divide Alexandrians from Antiochians. They are Nestorians, they are uh, monophysites. No, they are no the ones, nor the others. They are orthodox. They are not heretics. Uh, Christ, our common savior, uh, okay, the, uh, to, to cease, no hedge, no broken down, and the distress that has been made to cease, to cease the distress and the cause of all dissension. And the Greek word is vihonia, to have double mind. You think one thing about me and I think another thing about you. <laughs> Alexandria has been like the, because of Nestorius. So, he goes on then, he says, uh, the dissension has been removed. Christ, our common savior, rewarding his churches with peace. Now we are in peace. Uh, peace is what we explained yesterday, but I want to remind you in case you don't remember the power of this. What is peace? When Christ rose again and completed his work, what did he say in every appearance that he did before he ascended into heaven and sat to the right hand of the Father? Uh, as man, of course, there is humanity, our, our, the head of our humanity, and our humanity is hidden with God in heaven. As long as we understand what our humanity is and is united with the Lord, and not with any devil. Because devil is one who doesn't believe in God, a fallen angel. And fallen human beings are demons, because a demon, demon means the ancient said that the man has a, has a good uh, uh, nuance of meaning, the word demon. And in Greek we say, what a, what a person this is. In a demonus, a great scientist who knows a lot, a great philosopher, a great builder, a great uh, whatever, we say, what a demon he is. In other words, it's a positive word that he has, he has used his uh, powers that God has given him to do th great things. <laughs> uh, it's not a bad, but demon in the bad sense is that he is against all the others, against the good. He's done things for himself and not for anybody else. Or he becomes, he, he creates, uh, uh, what happens in Ukraine? He creates greater um, ammunition against the others. And there is a, there is a, <laughs> what is going on between Turkey and Greece at the moment, and the Turks and all the, all the people around them, they want to get from America the, the highest uh, ammunition than the Greeks because they want to get back their empire. Oh, oh, this is de demon, devil, in the worst possible sense. <laughs> uh, and the, the tragic is that the majority of the Turks are not Turks. They are Greeks, they are Christians, who became Muslims by force because they would kill them. And so their generation has forgotten who they really are. Erdogan. I'm giving you examples of uh, Erdogan, he's of Greek descent. And one day when he gave uh, to a Greek reporter, where are you from? He said, I'm Anadolu from the east, Anatolia. This is Cappadocia, right there. Then what was your place? He said, Potamia. So Potamia. Potamia is the river, the, the little village by the river. And he said, he, he said the original Greek name and we have it actually in the history that all the people in the Potamia became Muslims, otherwise they would have chopped their heads. So they did, as in Albania. There are many Muslims in Albania, and they say they belong to Turkey because they're Muslims. Now who says that? A former Greek Christian from Cappadocia. <laughs> He's the prime minister. And he goes against Greece, and he wants to take Greece back, back into Islam. What is this? That's not, that's not religion. I'm not saying that Islam is not a good religion. 
it's better than it was before for people who didn't have a religion. So, and it is based actually on the Bible in many ways, and there are many connections, but that's a different matter. Anyhow, so here we are. Uh, that is the paragraph, the first, okay? Uh, and it says, uh, preserve the right faith, there it is, who having become, uh, it says, the most orthodox and God beloved emperors, moreover, uh, inviting us, Cyril says to John, the two patriarchs and the two patriarchs, he invited us uh, to having become, uh, yes, divided, uh, inviting us there too, who having become most excellent imitators of the ancestral orthodoxy, they defend orthodoxy, so they want us to preserve the right faith, the right orthodox faith, sure, that's firm, and unshaken in their own souls. Moreover, they make a special care of his holy churches that they themselves may have renowned glory forever and renowned glory forever and render their empire most illustrious. How? By accepting Christ as the king of the empire. When you go to St. Sophia, you find in the two gates, on the two sides, uh, doors of the great gate, uh, in Hagia Sophia in Constantinople, uh, you get the one Christ on the throne and you have the emperor by, by the throne kneeling on his side and the queen on the other side of the Christ is on the th throne. This is all a mosaic which is all in gold. If you go to the other one, is the mother of God on the throne and again the emperor, that's the question. She is Theotokos. She is not just a mother. She is the mother of all humanity because she gave birth to the one who united or created all humanity and reclaims it as man. He took our nature so that all of us, in other words, have been saved in Christ. But this is not imposed by God because we are made free. We have freedom to choose. And we to choose life rather than death. We have to believe in him, that we belong to him and not to ourselves and not against others. This is what it's all about, to be Christian. He unites us. The mother of God is the mother of all human beings. Because this God has become a human being through her. She, he is the second Adam in the, the apostolic preaching, in the apostles. But not only the second, he is the eschatos, the last one. Because the eternal kingdom and salvation of humanity is hidden with him in God, with his own humanity, with the mother of God and the saints. Now, do we want to go there or do we want to go to the last judgment and be thrown into another age that we may repent? And another age. Glory be to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now and always, and to the ages of the ages. What are the ages? God has, is not in time, so we can go all the way until we repent and get saved. Because salvation is open, the door is open, but if we don't go into it, then we'll go outside. And there's another opportunity, because he's not against us. That is not something that can calm us. It's something that, uh, by the grace of God, it's a warning. Why, especially if we suffer. Uh, that's why to, to, be, to repent even before you, you die, like the thief on the cross on the right, who went straight to paradise because he repented just before he left his life. Are we going to leave it all to the last time to repent and receive Holy Communion as the church does to save the souls? The priest has to go and read the prayer, hear confession, and give communion to somebody who will go, as if he's the, 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 the right uh, thief in his life. I've done it several times, and I did to a Jew one day, because they were both with the Greek Orthodox in the hospital, and they were both waiting to die. Who was going to go first? There was a terminal situation, and I talked to the Greek guy, and I said, uh, uh, you have to repent and ask the Lord, do you want to? 
How do I repent? You don't know how to repent? Have you done many bad things in your life? Oh, yes, Father. I don't even remember them. There are too many. So I said, okay, report, uh, uh, repeat after me. So I said, oh, Lord, I prayed as if I was him. And he repeated it. So then I put holy water on him. And then I put holy oil from St. Nectarius. Then I read the prayer of absolution. And I gave him communion. And as I was going to go, hey, hey, he said, Father, what about me? There was the other guy who was there. I said, who are you? They, uh, I'm like him, I'm his friend. You know, are, you, are you Christian? No, no, I'm not. I'm Jewish. Oh, we have the same God, Lord. Mm-hmm. But you understand him in a, not fully, and we understand it. They listen, can you do me they, the same thing you did to him? I said, well, I had to baptize you. I had the, whole, the holy water. So I, in holy water, the servant of God put in his name. He told me his name. Then I put holy oil. Uh, I had the chrism with me. I christened him. And then I gave him communion. He was elated. How about that? They went to heaven. That's what it is. I mean, these are the real things in our life. Never to forget. Um, and that's why the church is here to lead us to the kingdom of heaven. Uh, but it's up to us where we're going and how we're going and all this. Okay. So when uh, he, he then says that uh, the letter that was sent to us, given uh, the terms of our reunion, uh, that they are orthodox, that they reject the Nestorianism, and that they believe that they, there is a text here that we had, it will come up again. Uh, so he, he says, let the heavens rejoice because we are saved, the churches, and they will not continue being divided. So, uh, and, and he goes to the next paragraph, which one then, that's the second paragraph there. Uh, this is about Paul of Emesa, one of the bishops who was sent, an envoy, a mediator, to give the faith uh, 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 a dogmatic statement about who Christ is. What do they believe about Christ? Because the belief in Christ is the foundation of, of orthodoxy. And Nestorius was destroyed the foundation by saying that Christ is not God become man. The incarnation, the mystery of the incarnation, taking up all humanity and claiming through humanity the whole universe which was created for man as we have it in the in Genesis. Man was the last, and God uh, reposed after that, after on the certain, when he created man on the sixth day, who was a link between heaven and earth before his fall. But he followed the devil who was fallen in the first creation of heaven. Okay. When then my Lord Paul, the brother and fellow minister, most dear to God, arrived at Alexandria, Paul of Emesa. Uh, we were filled with joy and very reasonably, both of us embraced one another. I mean, there are letters where he described, the next letter describes what happened when he appeared. Paul of Emesa went and bowed before the patriarch. The patriarch got him up, my brother, and they kissed each other. This was the first action of, as he, as he says, to my Lord beloved, to, to John, and he receives him and he praises him here. This, this is a wonderful thing because every word has a depth to it of how do we reconcile one another. We embrace one another. We have peace. We find a common mind. And we express it in a common creed. We do have a common creed. And he says that uh, to understand Christology is to understand the creed. The creed, if you go deeper into the creed, what does it mean that he became man? from the, became incarnate from the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary. What does that mean? Does it mean that he became true man and what is that? So uh, this is what we are here. Uh, And it says, when then my Lord brother came as a mediator and had elected to encounter, he dared to do this because he knew that there was a lot of animosity between the Alexandrians and the Antiochians. They had been put to prison, their patriarchs. A 
excessive toy. He was a man who was acting as mediator and had elected to encounter excessive toys in order to vanquish the envy of the devil. To destroy the devil, that's what in embracing your brother or your sister or husband to a wife or friends who have been divided, uh, peace and, and uh, become of the same mind, uh, destroy the division, is destroying the work of the devil. He's the one who does it. Okay, that's what it says here. And then further down it says our churches then have to now to agree, have unanimity and peace. That's orthodoxy. You can't divide the Orthodox Church because the body of Christ cannot be divided. We give in liturgy the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. Why can't we give it all to all the Orthodox? Why the Orthodox can be this and that? What divides them? And this is what is all about. This is the beginning of the reunion at that time. And that's uh, something that has to happen in every generation because we still have divisions of all kinds. Christians are divided. And that's why uh, the, the people don't pay attention to Christians anymore in a modern society, because they are divided. Wh wh which Christianity is right? Roman Catholic, Orthodox? Uh, which Orthodox? Which Protestant? Protestants are even more divided. And, and they are really former Roman Catholics. Okay? So, delighted were we at our intercourse, our discussion with that most pious man who probably thought that he would have no little that he would have no little difficulty in persuading us that it was duty to unite the churches in peace and stop the laughter of the heterodox. The heretics laugh at the Orthodox who are divided and to blunt the sting of the devil's contumacy. So I don't want to go back to what I was saying. He goes out again about peace my peace I live with you. This is like when we say peace with one another and love one another and finding communion uh, with one another. Then we do the will of Christ, not the will of the devil, and he gives the will of Christ. My peace I leave to you. That's what Christ said after his resurrection to the apostles. Irini passi, we say it in every liturgy, peace be to you all. And that is not the congregation there, but to through the congregation, the celebration has implications for all Orthodox Christians, all the parishes. Here in America, I don't know about the Greek parishes, many, many Greek parishes have been created because they were disagreeing with one another in the, the, board, of the, the board of the lady. And they created another church. Well, you don't create another church by division. No, that's not a church. Problems like this in all the jurisdictions of the Orthodox, whether they are Russians, Serbians, whatever, uh, whether they are known about the Orientals. I hope that you all feel that all the churches here, Coptic churches, they're all one church. And therefore, you don't just, they don't like some people there, and they create another church because they don't like in this church. Uh, you haven't been a Copts or not for a long time in America, but the whole society has these problems because they, uh, there is egoism here very much and there are too many diversifications. Uh, they don't want to, what is it that unites all the different people of the world which are represented in America? America is, has everybody from everywhere. It's the most, that's the first thing I realized when I first came here and I said, wow, you can find, you have, don't have to go to China, you don't have to go to any, anywhere in the world. You can find the people from everywhere here, all in your area. <laughs> and this is, this is miracle on the one hand. It's a great opportunity for the Christians to be here and embrace the others and to bring Christ to them and to uh, increase the church, which is what you have to tell the others uh, because they we're all invited, we're all united in Christ. Christ united all and died for all. So they belong to Christ. They belong to the, to the church, and the church is the body of Christ, all humanity. And we have to work for it and realize it, and not to be divided from others, because we have to win the others to what we have received as Orthodox Christians. That's the whole point. 
That's why I always understood here. And I said, uh, well, are you Greek? I said, well, I'm Greek, I'm Albanian, I'm Bulgarian, I am, uh, what do you think? Uh, where is Orthodox? Any Orthodox church? Uh, they have a flag. I can have all the flags uh, because they're all mine. <laughs> and I wrote a paper like this and said, what kind of theology is this that Father George is bringing to America when I came from England? And they, were, they just couldn't understand what I meant. And I meant what I'm saying to you, that we cannot be true Christians, whether we, whatever colors we have and whatever uh, our ethnicity is, our language and so on, because it's like Pentecost, the miracle of Pentecost. They all heard in Jerusalem, who came from different parts on Pentecost, they heard the gospel by the apostle in their own language. They were real languages, they were not uh, Pentecostals with glaring or unknown tongues. They're not unknown tongues, they were real tongues. How did this happen? The Holy Spirit came down. This is the birth of the church. The church that is universal for all human beings. It's Pente Pentecost is one of the greatest feasts and it is the birth of the church on earth. Wait, said Christ, I'll send you the paraclete. The paraclete is the one that unites all, the Holy Spirit. And we all receive it at baptism. But do we keep it or do we do not quench the Spirit, says St. Paul? What is that? If my spirit is not filled with the Spirit of God, of love and all the goodness with any other human being, then I can't do the liturgy. I'm not, I'm not uh, the liturgy is, is affected by my uh, bad reputation, if I'm like that, and by every one of us. Uh, so, these are serious things that have to be taken into account. It's better to suffer uh, than to make others suffer. That's what Christ did. He suffered all the things for all the people, even to be crucified. And that's the greatest crime that ever happened, will ever happen in creation. Why? because he wasn't just a man. He was the God who created all human beings and the whole world and was crucified. But then, this is the love of the, of the Creator, the goodness of God, that death could not make his humanity dead. His, his body did not see corruption. As it was prophesied, you will not see corruption. And going to hell, he did, was not imprisoned in hell like the souls, because the devil's power was destroyed. He appeared to be a, a, a criminal, because uh, by taking the sinners there, they are his, they belong to him. But killing God who created him, I mean, this is the supreme uh, uh, crime that can be done, the greatest crime of all. It wasn't the Jews and the Romans and the Greeks and whoever. It was all of us who uh, are with the devil, as it were, the fallen human beings that were there with the devil. He claimed him. He didn't realize that who he was. That's why he was tempted. And that's why he appeared in poverty. In, uh, he emptied himself of his glory, the divine glory and acted as a human being who was uh, mistreated by others. Uh, the gospel is very profound, very, very profound. It, it, it's it's the, uh, the queen of all the sciences, theology, because there is the mother of God, for the mother of all Christians, the new mother of our eternal life, the restoration of humanity. That's why she appears in every church. You can't have a church without the icon of the Mother of God. It's ever present, together with the Lord. Okay, I important things for us to recover always and, and grow up in our strength and the real context in which we spend our life and what our life is all about. So here we are, delighted were we in our discussions, united the churches in peace. And he says, uh, my Peace I leave to you, said Christ. Moreover, we have been taught to pray, O Lord our God, 
give us peace. He said that we must pray uh, for the peace of the Holy Churches of God. Let us pray to the Lord. One of the petitions we say many times in the litanies, Orthodox litanies, say that for the peace of the Holy Churches of God. How can the Holy Churches of God not be at peace? Because we are not many times. We quarrel on all kinds of things. We can't find unanimity. And there's a mind. Uh, for thou gavest us all things. You gave us everything. By giving us eternal life and the eternal kingdom of God, we are restored to our place in the universe, which is higher than the angels and higher than anything in the visible world. So, that's what he says. So that if one becomes a participator in the, this peace, which is abundantly supplied by God, he will not lack any good thing. Amazing words here. Deep and powerful. That's why this is one of the greatest letters that St. Cyril wrote. He changed the, the, the whole synod, the two synods that were separate, the one with the other, and excommunicating one another, dividing and creating all this. The two patriarchs did it, but St. Cyril was the one who was the chief one, and this is the letter, which is important. But that dissension, it says, by, but that dissension which arose between the churches was quite needless and inexcusable. Why do we fight about these things? Why couldn't we say, yes, he's wrong together, and uh, you're wrong about what you think we are, and you, uh, we are wrong because we think what you are. Uh, this is the point. It was inexcusable, needless and inexcusable. We have now been fully convinced since my Lord, the most God-beloved Bishop Paul, this man, dared to go with fear and trembling. Will the Egyptians accept an Antiochian? They thought because uh, Nestorius, as I said yesterday, he, Nestorius called St. Cyril Pharaonitis, Pharaoh. Who, who, as Pharaoh uh, persecuted and, uh, the Jews, so now the Christians have been persecuted by Caesar, who is <laughs> Pharaoh, <laughs> Pharaonides, a follower of Pharaoh. <laughs> uh, uh, you see, so the God beloved uh, Paul went and bowed before Caesar, thinking that he is a very powerful, and Caesar got him there as if we are my brother, he said. Wow. For an image, a real image uh, of joy, uh, and so on. And then he said, uh, he has proffered, he has prepared, given us a paper which contained an unmistakable confession of the faith. Uh, it's not unmistakable. It says, Adiavritos. You can't say that it is a devil's uh, confession like the. Uh, what distorted Christ was devilish. It was, it was uh, the devil that um, made people believe that Christ is not who he really is. Nestorius then was in the hands of the devil. So it's adiavitos. You cannot uh, distort uh, this faith that John brought through Paul of a Mesa to St. Cyril. That's wonderful in the letter here. He acknowledges. Uh, a confession of faith which he affirmed had been drawn up by thy holiness and the, the, he says to, to John he did by, by thy holiness because the letter is to, to the patriarch John that was brought by Paul so by thy holiness and the most pious bishops in that place the document is as follows it's a paragraph there we looked at it yesterday what does it say I, want, I don't want to go to repeat what we said yesterday, you can read it, but there are two things uh, which I can go down to the... We confess then, now, can we go to the beginning of the next paragraph? According to the, this program, it says doctrinal, B, it's the two doctrines, the two faith, the two expression of the faith, which is a true Christ. So... Uh, Yes. We confess, that's right. We confess then our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, perfect God and perfect man. There is the subject is the, is the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, perfect God and perfect man of a rational soul and body. In other words, he's a man, he's a man, a real man. He has body and soul, not just a body. And you see why. Before the ages, begotten from the Father, before the ages, there are many ages before in creation. Many people think that the six days of creation is a myth, is a Christian myth. There are many books, if you find, by former Christians here in America, illustrated with all kinds of pictures about the first day and the second day. Uh, it's Christian mythology, they call it. It's not mythology, there are ages. Because a, thousand, a, a day is like a thousand years. Actually, on that basis, creation in the biblical chronology is uh, 6,000 years from today. So we are in the Sabbath. But the Sabbath has passed and we are now during the closing uh, because there is a prophecy by early Christians on this that we are near the end of this creation. However, um, it says, we confess then who, who Christ is, begotten from the Father as of his Godhead. We're talking about his Godhead. And in the last days, the self-same, so it's he himself, who is the Son of God, eternally begotten, he for us and for our salvation, born of Mary, the Virgin, as to his manhood. She did not bear God. He is God in his person. Uh, but she did not give his Godhead. When we talk about Theotokos, did not give birth to his Godhead, to his, what he shares with his Father and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, right? Because the Holy Trinity, we have two words for understanding the mystery. They are one in what? In nature. The Father is God, and the Son is God, and the Spirit is God, and it's the same, one God. Either though they are three persons, three hypostases, it stands on this mystery in God, that he is the Father who has a Logos, and he has a Spirit, which is in the Logos. And through the Logos and the Spirit, he created all things. It's like a human being who is made according to the image and likeness. And we have two hands, because we have Logos in our soul. And in our, uh, in, 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 we have the Logos and we have the freedom, which is life. Uh, the two go together, and they must be together. As the Logos of God, the, the, uh, there's a mystery here about uh, all this creation. And this is presupposed here, and, and it is explained. So, it says, a father, uh, uh, yes. And he goes on, born of the Virgin Mary and his manhood, the same, it's over there, coessential. Now, what is coessential? Essence, esse, is being. And in Greek, uh, it's usia, from on. God is the one who is. And we say, why we say holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, mighty and immortal. Mighty refers to the Son, who is the power of God, the laws of God, through whom all things were made. And, uh, and the spirit, uh, so mighty and immortal. It's the spirit of life. In him there was life, and the life was the light of men. The life of men. In him, in the Logos, who created man. So here it is um, the same coessential. Now, coessential is consubstantial because the word being in Latin. Is Latin philosophy, philosophical terms, had made confusion of the real meaning of the terms here. We don't know what the being of God is. There's one being, but there are three beings, so it's unity in Trinity and Trinity in unity. That's a mystery which is not explained, but they are an existence which is particular, has the name Father, but they are not divided because they have one common nature. That's a mystery. Unity in Trinity and Trinity in Unity. And the, all that is explained in the letters to Serapion by Saint Athanasius. 
Unbelievable. He who has seen me has seen the Father. How is that? Why is he? The Father nobody has seen. So the mystery of the person of the Father is not explained. Will, nobody can see the Father but through the Son. He who has seen me has seen the Father. Uh, these are deep things that uh, the Fathers have explained to us. We can't explain what the being of God is. What I love from St. Athanasius is, uh, and he was 18 years old when he wrote it, or very young, if not 18, 20, some people say, no, 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 he couldn't have done it. Uh, but these are theories that scholars uh, do. Uh, we know from what is written by the ancients that he was very young. Uh, and we know that's what it is when he wrote this writing, which is the most important text that done uh, in the early church. The mystery of the incomination of the Son of God and Anthropicis became a human being, the one who created all human beings. So uh, it says here, um, con consubstantial, co-essential, co uh, co-existing, I would say. The existing, they exist as one, so there is the mystery of the unity of existence of the Father, God and God and God and Godhead, and divine nature is one, and uh, it's not the person that makes the nature, but this is a, there is a double thing in God. There is the hypostasis, what is distinctive, and what is united. Just as we are all humans, right? And although our, even our bodies, you know, we have, but there is something distinctive in every one of us. Uh, I don't want to go into details, but uh, this is what is suggested here. So, and, and he's almost with us because our existence is created existence. It's not like existence of God. We can't just make us the, the basis of God. God doesn't have a body doesn't have a soul, but what is a soul? We don't even know our own soul. How can say we are spiritual? But if we don't know what our spirit is, how is the spirit? God is spirit. But we sense it because you can't describe it as we describe a body. This, this, we are a, a soul, a psychosomatic, psychosomatic, because psyche is the soul. So uh, we are a unity of two. Why this body is not the original body, it's the fallen body. That's why it dies and is risen again, which will never be destroyed again. That's eternal life in the resurrection of all beings. And some will be judged and some will go to heaven like angels. And about the angels with the mother of God and the saints. That's the reality. People believe it and go to heaven. People don't believe it, they don't know where they're going. And what does he say? And coincidental with us as to the manhood. So he's one in, with the Godhead and one with the manhood, coincidental. For there was a union of two natures. So nature, what is nature then? It's the, the way God is in his unity and what humanity is in its unity. Because we're a unity. You can't uh, cross the human race with any animal race. Human beings uh, guided by the devil, uh, they have intercourse with animals. That's uh, beyond sodomy and uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. These are in the canons of the church that they were, uh, you know, um, negated by the church for because people become uh, body body minded. That's why in English we speak about somebody, nobody, anybody. Uh, body, they are not bodies. They are souls. They are spiritual beings. They are. They have freedom. They have. Uh, they are made in the image and likeness of God. You are all human beings, but they are buried in the body, the bodily dimension and the vices, using the hands which are made for to do good things, they do the opposite. So, here we are. For there was a union of two natures whereby we confess one Christ, one Son, one Lord. Son of God, Son of Man, but the one is the same one. 
That's a distinction between the nature or usia and the person or hypostasis, as it says. Uh, each one of us has a spiritual DNA. We all have souls, and it's the same substance. As, uh, your soul and my soul and every soul are souls. It's a different kind of substance, which cannot be, it's not like a body. It's not a body within a body. You can't in bodily terms describe the inner human being, because the inner human being has power with the mind, the soul, and freedom to capture the whole world, to be a creator. But not independently of the creator. St. Basil says he made man in his image and likeness so that he, in the creation he created, would be the laboratory of a synergy, of a cooperation between God and man. That's why the world, God has plans for the human being to be a collaborator in the universe. That's the most optimistic and the most wonderful understanding of what a human being really is. And it's there revealed in the scriptures and in the fathers and the tradition of the church and has been explained. But human beings go, the, the devil uh, is the kingdom of the devil. This is a secular history and the history of the church are two different parallel realities. And what is real, what is unreal. And what is going to be destroyed because it's unreal, it doesn't survive. And what is real and will become eternal. And that's the difference. The history of the church is different from the history of this world, which uh, you say we will reunite people and there will be reunion of everything and sort out problems. Every time we think we have a problem, United Nations, we have this and that, but we never do it. We can't do it. We want to kill one another and we divide one another. We'll never do it because history, not the history of God with us, it's not Christian history, it's not Orthodox Church, it's not the Church, because Church means to be called out of the situation of the fallen kingdoms of God, of, of the devil. He, is the, he has the kingdoms of this world, as I said. He told Christ on the, one of the temptations that Christ had before he started his public ministry, which was three years. He took him on the temple and he said, throw yourself from the temple. You will, God will say, and he quoted scripture that if uh, he will send his angels to save you. Uh, and he said, you are not going to tell your God what to do. <coughs> he was telling him that he was God, but he didn't understand he was God. He, he made himself God, but he wasn't God. He said, go behind me, Satan the kingdoms of this world. That's the secular history, which can never make it because it's the, 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 the kingdoms of the devil. Okay. And according to the, if the church was not here, we would have been destroyed already. But Christ came and the church, the Holy Spirit is here. We pray and every time we offer the Eucharist everywhere, all the churches, whether we fully understand it or not, we open up heaven, the kingdom of heaven, the powers of heaven in this world, which is fallen, which is that the devil is operating. Have you ever thought about it? To go to church and be participant in this? That's the way uh, the spirit of God is fervent through human beings, through the church. There's a crisis in the church here because uh, the world is in crisis and the people uh, are influenced by, it should be the, right, the other way around, not the way it is. Okay, that's what St. Cyril suggests here. So, and he says, one Christ, one Son, one Lord. And according to this idea of the unconfused union of divinity and humanity, we can't confuse our humanity. The two natures, the divinity and the humanity, cannot become a muddled, uh, the, the divine become human and the human divine. Not this kind of confusion, doesn't exist. But then because they are united forever, in other words, God will be incarnated and incominated, a man and the head of all humanity, will last forever. The mystery of Christ is the foundation, as I said here, sincere, the basis of the reconciliation of all those Christians. Because we belong to him, all Christians. And all humanities. But 
that the Christians are those who believe in Christ. And therefore, we have to be united. And that's what St. Cyril did with St. John of Antioch. Ephesus would have been dead because there were two, two different uh, distinctions there. Uh, yes, there were synods, two synods, one against the other, two patriarchs, one against the other. And all these divisions of Christians today, they are terrible things, they are similar things. That's why we have to be united. There's no other way. We can't just go to the Eucharist and not have the others united with other brothers. This is the whole thing. So it says, and with regard to the evangelic and apostolic, oh yes, sorry, it says, uh, one then Christ, one Son, one Lord, and according to this idea of the unconfused union, we confess the Holy Virgin to be Theotokos, because God the Word was incarnated and lived as man, not lived as man, became man. That's a wrong translation, because there's no English word to be uh, humanated. He was humanized. Humanity was divinized, and divinity was humanized. How? What is the manner? Why? So they became one. Why? Because there is one person. The person is the one that brings the unity to the one and the other, without confusing the one and the other. But without losing the union, they're united because of the one person. What is the basis? Is it the divinity or is it the humanity? The two are united because of the person who united them. There's one person. You see, one Christ, one Son, one Lord. Uh, and we have one person. Each one has a spiritual DNA. But we all have souls which are from the same substance. What is the substance of the soul? We don't know. What, what is it made of, the soul? But it's not the body. It's not the breath we have. As some people say that the soul is the breath. When the soul leaves the body, the body dies immediately. But it's the spirit that enlightens, that, that vivifies. And we say it. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Now that's another translation again in English because the, the English language is not as, as flexible and as rich as uh, the original languages that, the, of the creed, which says to pneuma to zopoiun, which creates life. In him, in the word, was life, and the life was the light of man. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and this our spirit, which is enlightened and sustained by the Holy Spirit, is not sustained by us. We're sustained by Him, but we don't get glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Spirit. The glory of the Spirit of the Trinity is the glory of the human beings, because they are made according to the image and the likeness. The image is the one that took our humanity, and the likeness is the life which is in that image. It's a living image. That's the souls. So. Uh, what? What? Okay, okay. I'm reminded we are uh, past the time. I know we have passed the time. Uh, but in this text here, you can talk about a lot of things to bring them, to make them alive, to get to the depth of them. Uh, I think I have, uh, by His grace, who is the head here of the school, I hope I will come again and we can complete what we started here. I thought it would be the beginning and another beginning is this one because I have to explain, read it, but you can't believe what this is because this is the real sincere, as the church understands sincere, the synaxarium of sincere here and hypatia and what happened with this and that why uh, the cops cover themselves when they do the liturgy? Why they do this? Why that? Why, why the, the mitre they wear is different from other? It's not like the Byzantines or, or whatever. They're all here. And what do they mean, all these things? What, what are the stars or the... I mean, I, when you know that, you love it. You say, what? Okay? Because there are 24, yes, there are 12, there are 12, six and six, there are 12 apostles. 
And that's the unity of the church. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. So nothing is the apostolic. Only the Pope say the apostolic. He's another apostle. So he's sincere. And sincere is the one who multiplies ten times the ten things that St. Athanasius has made. So he's made them a hundred. That's the relation of St. Athanasius and sincere. And that's why this quote is based, that's the basis. And it's the Trinity, the mystery of the Holy Trinity in unity, and the mystery of the divinity and humanity in the one Christ. The incarnation, incomination, the unity of all human beings, as beings and as particular beings, as particular persons. All the persons are satellites to the one person, who is Christ. Our eyes are not eyes. He is the eye. I live, said St. Paul, not I, but Christ in me. Christ is the eye for every one of us. If we make him his eye, and we are the, the thou, there is actually a Jewish philosopher who found this in the Old Testament. And the prophets, the I thou, God is the I and we are only thou. Well, that's right, that's a Christian too, because the prophets actually were saying the truth. That's the real humanity. Anyhow, I, I'll stop there because I've been warned and it will take a <laughs> time. For me, there's no time. When you go into spirituality, forget it. It's, it's, it's an eternal perspective. But then that's what renews us. When we pray, if we pray, truly pray, in other words, we give time. We don't say, oh, how many, I'll pray in five minutes, ten minutes, because uh, I have to go there. And I have the cares of this world, they take away the real treasure, the real life, that enlivens us to do things. We have to be flexible about the truth and what is higher, and not to go to the lower and take down what is primary in our humanity. If we pray more, then we'll be stronger more. And more, we can achieve many more things that on the bodily dimension in this life. With the blessings of uh, uh, Saidna, not Saidna, what is the other word that you use?